Well, good morning again, um, everyone. So have you, you trust that you all have been staying safe during the typhoon. Um, yeah, this year the the, the Hong Kong of Observatory had um, announced had made it um, um, like um, the, the typhoon was going to be very severe, and um, indeed, um, can we show the powerpoints? Okay, yeah. So yeah, wow. Well, <coughs> well, have you seen that video on the on the internet? Uh, the 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 woman was blown by the ty by the wind and then slide across the street a few meters. It was well, I I could totally imagine that because the floor the floor was wet and um, the wind was very strong. So um, yeah, that could happen. But um, uh, oh, and and of course the trees um, fell down and also windows breaking. Um, and also people rushed to the supermarket to buy any food they could find and the, and man, wow gee the vegetable was so expensive it used to be about ten dollars per um per chinese pound but uh, it, they rose the price to thirty dollars to per chinese pound so well anyway yeah so storms and um um well, natural disasters can happen, yeah, and they do happen. And uh, about a month and a half ago, we um, I went with the English youths um, to Thailand for a trip, and um, we went to visit this cave. Um, I don't know anyone do knows about it. Um, a few years ago, um, this is where there was a teen soccer team trapped deep inside the cave. Okay, and the cave was really, well, see the map. Um, it's a really long um, corridor inside the cave. And, and the team went um, five, four, and four to five kilometers deep inside the cave. Yeah, and then suddenly there was heavy rain, storm, heavy rain. And the rain flooded the caves, um, a lot of area. Well, the cave goes up and down, up and down like this. And then the rain flooded the entrance and, uh, and, and most part of it. So the team was trapped inside the cave. And it, in, it actually um, attracted international attention. And um, a team coming from Australia, from everywhere in the world, um, um, experts um, went to that place trying to rescue the soccer team. Okay, those remember those are teenagers. Okay, and um, well, they were trapped inside the cave ten days. Wow, I just when I was in the cave, I just imagined wow, ten days in that dark, cold cave and no food. Okay, well, there are plenty of water. There was plenty of water, but uh, wow, that was such a, um, such a, well, I, I wouldn't say experience of a lifetime, but uh, it was uh, such a um, scary time. Okay, so, well, Fortunately, um, or by God's, God's grace, um, finally an Australian diver came up with the idea to dive inside and then um, put the kids one by one to sleep and then take them out one by one. So the whole team was rescued. But uh, one of the Thai um, diver who used to be in the army, not the army, um, the navy, um, died during the rescue operation. Yeah. And so, yeah, those, uh, well, the storms may happen in a larger scale, but it can happen to a, in a smaller scale on the personal level. So when storms come into our life, what do we do? Well, um, today we are going to look at a storm that Jesus and his disciples experienced. And remember, we are going to um, study the book of Mark um, in order to know Christ better and his relationship with his people through the gospel of Mark. 
So this is our aim. So we may have, um, in the past, we may have our personal idea of Christ. Um, a lot of it may be um, just what we heard um, people say it's about Jesus or what we see on the internet um, about Jesus. But we are going to go through the book of Mark and then to know Christ for who he is through the scripture. Okay, so let's dive into the text. Let's first look at the setting and the situation. Okay, so Jesus was um, at the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is a huge lake. Um, I, it's about 10 kilometers across in diameter. And this is, um, see the place there is probably where Jesus was preaching. So he was on the boat um, preaching to the crowd um, who stands at the shore so that um, people would not crowd in to him, too close to him. Okay. And this Mark um, says, um, again, he began to teach beside the sea and a very large crowd gathered about him so that he got into a boat and sat on it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And Jesus was there teaching the crowd from morning. So, we, and um, we look at the text, verse 35. On that day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. So it was evening. And Jesus was preaching there for the whole day. So you can imagine he must be exhausted. He, he was tired. And that's why the text, um, when it's mentioned, he was in the stern at sleep on the cushion. We could totally understand and imagine why Jesus was sleeping because he was exhausted. And let's look at the text. So the text says, um, leaving the crowd, they took him in the boat just as he was. So he was in the same boat. And then there were other boats with him. So you can imagine Jesus in one of the boats and then there were several other boats going across the, this huge lake at night time, okay, together. And um, just a question to you. Do you remember um, several of Jesus' disciples? What were their occupation? Yeah, fishermen. So, and um, they were experienced fishermen. And they also, they fish. They do their fishing uh, at the Sea of Galilee. So, they should know that area very well, right? Okay. So, when Jesus asked them to, let, well, let us go across the lake to the other side. It's 10 kilometers across, okay? And it's, a, it's, a, it's quite a distance. And they were fishermen. So, if they see that um, the weather is not going to be good, would they go? No. They would probably, if if they could see that the weather was going to be bad, um, they could they would probably say to Jesus, "Oh, it's going to there's going to be rain and storm very soon, so let's stay on the shore for the night." Okay, but they didn't say anything, and they went with Jesus. So that means they see that oh yeah, the weather is all good. Um, so let's go across. Yeah. But then the text says, and a great storm, wind storms arose. So um, the word for great in Greek is mega. So you, you can think of a mega storm, okay, arose. And the waves were breaking into the boat. So it, it caught them by surprise, really. Okay, so you can imagine the situation. Now, nowadays, we go out at night and have fun, right? Um, people go to Lang Kui Fong at night um, until um, 12 or 1 o'clock at night and, and like it's nothing. But remember in the ancient time, 
were, were there street lights? No street lights. So what sort of light did they depend on during the night? Yeah, the moon. And oh, did anyone see the super moon two days ago? Yeah, you saw it. Okay, wow. I thought I thought that that was going to be a storm, so you couldn't see it. But uh, um, yeah. Anyway, the moon and the stars the, at at night time. Well, there was no um, lighting pollution in the ancient time. Okay, so you could see the bright sky and beautiful sky, and then uh, and um, you can depend on this on the stars and the moon to give you light um, at night time to see okay but then when the storm comes do you think they could still see anything if yes, there would there would be crowd clouds right covering all the moonlight and um, the stars they could not see anything it's all dark total dark Anybody has been in total darkness. I had been. Um, there, there is a. Um, <coughs> there is a um, sort of a museum nearby here. Um, they call it the uh, Experience in the Darkness. It's run by a group of um, visually disabled people, and they take you inside and you walk through uh, different places. But there's there's no light in there at all. Total darkness, and I went there, went inside there once, and then I tried to I put my hand in front of me and look, and I couldn't see anything. It's total darkness. That's scary, and that's the type of situation they were in when the storm came, the wind and the waves. Okay. Breaking into the boat, and if even if they had um, oil lamps, it would probably be um, put out by the sea water because it's all the water is coming in. <coughs> <coughs> so, do you think the disciples were scared? Yes. Okay. So it would be more like um, <coughs> I'm going to read the text to you once again. So. You can feel the kind of situation. Okay. On that day, when evening had come, he said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with him. Um, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already feeling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. And then the wind suddenly stopped. The wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? That's the kind of situation they were in. It was scary. So let's continue to see what they did. So this is um, probably an accurate picture of the boat. Um, Jesus was asleep in the stern. Probably there was a storage for um, fish, and he was sleeping inside there. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? So they were calling him teacher. And then they were questioning, do you not care? And they were worried about, we are perishing. So um, what about Jesus? Anyone cares about him? He was sleeping in the stern. If um, the boat sinks, 
he he was going to be the first one who would, who would, who perish, right? Okay. And let's ask this question: When they try to wake up Jesus, what were they expecting Jesus to do? What could Jesus do in that type of situation? Well, for us, um, of course, we we say, "Oh yeah, um, Jesus is God, and He could um, just stop the wind and storm." Um, is that so? Um, is that what the disciples were thinking? Well, in the <coughs> in the text, let's go back a bit. Um, If we read the text um, in verse 40 and 41, they were, they were filled with great fear seeing what Jesus did to stop the wind and storm. So they were totally not expecting Jesus to just stop the wind and the storm. So in that type of situation, what did they expect Jesus to do? Well, th certainly they would think of Jesus as a great teacher. That's why they follow Jesus. But they did not expect Jesus to have the power of God. Um, well, remember in the old days, um, there was no scientific explanation for storm. Okay? So who caused the storms? in the old days, in the, in the ancient people's mind. And especially when there's a sudden storm, you look at the sky, well, it's going to be good weather, and then suddenly the storm came. Well, let's look at the book of Jonah. And the book of Jonah, um, here the prophet Jonah was in a very similar situation. He was running away from God, okay, and he was on a big ship. But the Lord heard a great wind up on the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried out to his God. So people cried to their gods, okay. And then they found Jonah sleeping under, um, in the lower floor, in the inner part of the ship. And, they, and the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call out to your God. Perhaps the God will give us a thought on us that we may not perish. So in the ancient mind, storms were caused by the gods. In particular, when there is a sudden storm. So, um, although the disciples of Jesus they were worshippers of Yahweh, um, the God of Israel, but remember, in, at that time it was the Roman Empire, and the Roman Empire they had many gods. Okay, so they may be confused. Okay. So it's more like this in their mind when there's a storm, Zeus versus Poseidon. So the gods were causing this great storm. Only the gods had power. Well, this um, actually, a, well, although nowadays we have scientific studies um, on the weather, we could pretty much predict um, with um, quite good accuracy about the weather condition, like um, the, see that's the um, that's the typhoon um, um, Swala, okay, <laughs> just um, yesterday. We could predict its path, and then well, that was the picture, the flooding in the east side of Hong Kong a few years ago, caused by another. Um, severe typhoon. So this year they were prepared. They put up a lot of water gates in order to prevent the flooding going into the buildings. Um, 
but um, still we have no control over the weather. We can predict, but we have no control. But sometimes, just because um, of our advance in science and technology, we would think of um, in terms of like this. Do you know what that is? I have this um, Alexa device at home, and I could say, Alexa, turn on the light, and it would turn on the light for me. Alexa, turn on the air conditioning, and turn it off at um, 11, a p 11 a.m. at night, and it would do that for me. Okay, we have, well, yes, um, science and technology is so advanced nowadays, we could just say a word, light, and there is light. Okay, water, and then um, you would give us water. Well, yeah, yeah, there are smart devices you can install on your water tap, and then you would, you would um, turn on the water for you. <coughs> but <coughs> we tend to think that, okay, yeah, for weather, for the climate, we tend to think that we could do the same. But can we do that? No, we. No matter how advanced our science and technology um, gets, we still have no control over the weather. Okay, <clears throat> but we look at Jesus, and he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, "Peace, be still." Well, <clears throat> the disciples we're not expecting him to do this. Just like say to Alexa, Alexa, tell the wind to, to stop and tell the um, water to stop flooding and it all stop. <laughs> wow. The disciples, they were trusting Jesus as a great teacher, someone who is godly, who is close to God. So they were expecting Jesus to wake up and then pray to the Father, Oh, Heavenly Father, please save us and stop the wind and storm. Something like that. That would be totally expected. But Jesus just got up and said to the wind, Hey, you, stop. Hey, you, be quiet. Wow. Who has that power to command over the climate this wind and the sea apart from God. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> after the after Jesus stopped the wind and the storm, he said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And then they were filled with great fear. So the great the Greek word is the Greek word is magger, magger fear. You can imagine they were afraid during the storm, but now they were even more afraid when they find out that, wow, this Jesus, I've been following him for many months, but still I know nothing about Jesus. Who then is this? And Jesus said their fear is related to their faith. So here we can see that if this fear it points to the area of our lack of faith. So if when we are when <coughs> When we are out of work and um, there's for may well some people um, lose their jobs and um, out of work for quite a few months, and then we can worry, we can be fearful. Okay, <coughs> can it be a lack of faith for our fear that um, God will you look after me? even when I'm out of work 
will you take care of me? That type of faith. Or when we are in a life-threatening situation, are we fearful because we don't know if God is going to save or if there is eternal life? So that's when there's fear, it prompts us to think about which area am I lacking faith? And do I know Jesus for who he is? In the, in the book of Mark, actually it's a journey with Jesus. Um, for the first eight chapters, we gradually see who Jesus really is through his work. And um, the disciples, they also learn about who Jesus was. Um, remember in the first few chapters, Jesus was healing people's sickness. Jesus was casting out demons. Okay, so the disciples were seeing Jesus doing all those things. And they gradually learn, okay, yeah, Jesus is a great teacher. And Jesus has got power over the demons and, the, and sickness. But they did not expect Jesus to have power over the, over the weather, over the climate, because that's the area of God. Okay, no human being has power over the climate except God. But then Jesus showed he had the power over climate, over the storm. And through this incident, the disciples were prompted to th really think, okay, I'm fearful, but who is Jesus? Is my faith in Jesus right? So, to conclude, um, there are some questions we can think about. Okay. No matter how long you have been a believer or you have heard about Jesus, what is your Jesus like? Is he someone who cares about your well-being? Well, um, Pastor Edmund Chen in Singapore um, once said, well, it's easy for people to um, <coughs> to say that God is great, but sometimes it's not easy for people to say that God is good. It's because of our understanding of God's grace. So it's something that we have to think about. Okay, yeah, what is, our, what is my Jesus, my understanding of Jesus like? Is he really who he claimed to be in my mind? Is he really God in my belief or is he more like just a good teacher like the disciples understanding at that time <laughs> and also we are prompted to ask when you ask Jesus for help do you prescribe for him to help you in some particular way like the disciples they wake up they try to wake up Jesus okay yeah Jesus wake up and in their mind, they were expecting Jesus to pray to God to, to deliver them. But Jesus did something totally out of their expectation. So it can be the same for us too. When we pray to God for help, maybe we already prescribe for him to help us in a certain way. Oh yeah, God, if you help me this way, then um, I would be fine. But a lot of time, God works in different ways in our lives. <coughs> and then third, okay, yeah, here's an interesting one. When a storm hits in your life, do you feel that, sometimes we may feel that Jesus is slipping, or even on another boat. We are on the boat where um, next to Jesus' boat, okay, he seems so far away. 
So we, uh, we may ask, okay, yeah, Lord, do you even care about me? I'm um, perishing. So what do we do? If we are on the same boat, then we do what the disciples do. Hey, Jesus, wake up, please help. And, but if he is on another boat, what do we do? Well, we ask those people who are on the same boat with Jesus, Hey, ask, uh, call out to the Lord for help. And that's why we need a community of believers. We need each other to pray for each other. And, um, yeah, and also any difficult situation that we experience in our life is supposed to bring us closer to Jesus and a better understanding of him. So in our past, have you ever experienced any difficult situation that brings you closer to the Lord and enhance your understanding of him? And in the future, I hope that any difficult situation you are in that would bring you to a um, better understanding to Jesus and also to greater faith. So let us pray. <coughs> well, dear Lord, you are good God and you are with us through the storms. Although sometimes we may not feel that you are with us, but we know you are there. And Lord, um, as we go through our life journey and there are, and difficult situations are um, going to arise from time to time, Lord, protect us and also guide us so that um, we may experience your help and that we may grow in our faith to know that you are truly the Son of God and that you are the mighty God who has power even over the weather and the storm. And Lord, um, um, we pray that um, you bring us into better understanding of you for who you are and that um, we may come to a true understanding of you and true faith in you. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <clears throat>